Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Deacon Abby B., and I serve at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Monday in the week of the last Sunday after Pentecost, Proper 29. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson comes from the first letter of Peter, the first chapter, beginning at the first verse. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen and destined by God the Father and sanctified by the Spirit to be obedient to Jesus Christ and to be sprinkled with His blood. May grace and peace be yours in abundance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen Him, you love Him, and even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time that the Spirit of Christ within them indicated when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you, in regard to the things that have now been announced to you through those who brought you good news by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, into which angels long to look. Here ends the lesson. The first letter of the Apostle Peter is an abundant offering of the greatness of Jesus' salvation. Peter seems to relish in relaying every part of salvation as he spells it out in these first 12 verses. It begins with a greeting or salutation. He identifies himself as an Apostle of Christ, one sent by Jesus himself. Peter is part of the group sent out to preach the gospel and made up especially of Christ's twelve disciples and Paul. He then offers encouragement to the recipients, Christians in the region of Asia Minor, what we know in modern-day Turkey. These specific areas were places that Christianity had been extended in the first several decades after the beginning of the Church. It was probably the route that the original courier of Peter's letter followed in distributing the letter. This was not written to any one congregation, but intentionally written to all Christians. Peter offers a blessing with grace and peace be yours in abundance, and then goes on to tell readers to be ready for the inevitability of trials attacks, and persecution that will come as members of the new church. He lays out for the communities of Asia Minor and for us today what it means to live as chosen people who are born again. 
while we may be tested by fires that are not literal, smoke and flames, nevertheless, the difficulties we face may leave deep, lasting scars on our souls. When Peter considered the salvation of God, his immediate response was to simply praise Him. Peter lists a number of things which should give us joy as Christians. Notice that as Peter lists them, they run together. They cannot be analyzed in complete isolation from each other. Great mercy, new birth, living hope, protection by God's power and salvation when Christ returns. Our faith, an inheritance described as an imperishable inheritance, is something that cannot be tarnished by the trials we face. We rejoice in God's blessings, knowing that even with trials, we find joy in our salvation. A key to this joy comes to us in the verses of this reading. Although you have not seen Him, you love Him, and even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. A reason to rejoice indeed. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Son Jesus Christ to reconcile the world to yourself. We praise and bless you for those whom you have sent in the power of the Spirit to preach the gospel to all nations. We thank you that in all parts of the earth a community of love has been gathered together by their prayers and labors, and that in every place your servants call upon your name. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays or 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings. If you are unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.